So in this part of the course, you'll be using natural language processing, which is the art of understanding human language with a computer, to learn how to build a web app from a blank canvas that tackles the very real problem of comment spam, which many developers will encounter at some point in their career. Over the last decade, web apps have become more social and interactive, with support for multimedia, comments, and more, all happening in real time by potentially tens of thousands of people, even on smaller websites. This, however, has also presented an opportunity for spammers to abuse such systems to associate less savory content with the articles, videos, and posts others have written in an attempt to gain more visibility. Traditional methods of spam detection, such as a list of blocked words, can easily be bypassed and are simply no match for these advanced spam bots, which continuously evolve in their complexity. Fast forward to today, and you can now use machine learning models that have been trained to detect such spam. Traditionally, running a machine learning model to pre-filter comments may have been performed on the server side, but with TensorFlow.js, you can now execute machine learning models on the client side in browser via JavaScript before such a comment even touches the back end, potentially saving costly server-side resources too. Now, in the previous section, you learned that for the first part of this chapter, you'll be using a pre-trained comment spam detection model to get familiar with passing data into and out of that model. And as you've seen before, this model is available over on the TensorFlow Hub Model Garden as shown. It should be noted that you could retrain a model like this to do more than just comment spam detection. Maybe you want to detect what language someone has written a comment in to then automatically translate it, or maybe you have a contact form that you automatically want to decide what team to send the email to without needing to read it yourself. You'll learn how to retrain this model later in this chapter, but for now, let's continue loading this pre-made one for now. For this project, you'll use a slightly different boilerplate to start from. Here, you'll use one that's set up to use Node.js to create a very simple backend that's capable of using WebSockets to send data to any connected front-end user. With this, you'll be able to create a website where as you leave a comment, you'll see that comment updated anywhere else that you have the web page open to if it's not deemed to be spam. Now, let's quickly check the layout of this more advanced boilerplate code. After remixing the project, you'll see more files and folders than you've seen before. The first thing to note is that all your static website files, like the index.html, script.js, and style.css, are now inside a folder named www as highlighted on the left. Next, there's a .end file, which we'll not be using, but essentially this is just a special feature of Glitch to store passwords and sensitive data that you don't want people remixing if they clone your project later from your server-side code. Moving on down, you'll see there's also a file named package.json. This file contains the Node.js configuration to specify some metadata about the project, along with any dependencies it needs to install in order to run the application correctly. In this case, you'll be using the Express framework to create a simple web server, so this is the only dependency for now. You'll also see that server.js is specified as the main script, which is where you'll write your Node.js application code later on. In fact, let's take a look at that file right now. Inside server.js, you can see some boilerplate code to set up an express web server that will serve the files contained in the www folder that you saw earlier. Right now, this simply imports the express library, creates a new instance of express that is assigned to a constant called app, and then tells the app to serve the contents of that folder. Further down, you can see that when a GET request is received from some client's web browser with no file specified, it will return the index.html file by default. Finally, at the end, the app is set up to listen on the default port that Glitch uses for Node Web App Serving using a special environment variable of process.env.port, which I believe just represents the number 3000 in this case. So if you open the preview window at this point, it will show the placeholder index.html page as shown on the right. Okay, so in this section, you'll be replacing the code within the body of index.html. Go ahead and open that up and then replace the body with the code shown on the following slides. First, you're gonna add a H1 tag for the page title, along with a H2 for the article title. Nothing special here. Just below this, you're gonna add an iframe tag that embeds an arbitrary YouTube video. For now, you're using the mighty TensorFlow.js wrap as a placeholder, but you can put any video here that you want simply by changing the URL inside of the iframe. In fact, on a production website, all of these values would be rendered by the backend dynamically, depending on the page being viewed, but that's beyond the scope of this course. 
Further down, you added a section with an ID and class of comments. This section element contains a content editable div to write new comments to, a button to submit the new comments, and an unordered list of pre-existing comments that has the ID of comments list. Now each comment has a username and time of posting within a span tag inside each list item. And then finally, the comment itself in a paragraph tag. And one example comment is hard-coded for now as a placeholder to show you what it looks like. And finally, you have the regular TensorFlow.js library import, and of course, the script.js import for the code you're about to write in that file. Now, as there's a lot of contents here, if you want to copy the code directly, it can be found at the URL shown for convenience. Okay, so at this point, refreshing your live preview should now look like the screenshot on this slide that will show the TensorFlow.js wrap as your placeholder video for now. You can even click the YouTube video to play it, and it should actually work as expected for a fun two minute break where 90% of the video is made of purely TensorFlow.js demos for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so next it's time to add some styles to make this page look a little nicer. Again, this is not a course for CSS, but essentially these styles mainly position and color the various HTML elements when they're in different states. As there's quite a few styles in this demo, you can copy the code directly from the link shown if needed. Great. Now you copied over all the styles correctly, your live preview should now look like this. It's looking a lot more like a real website now, and note that when you click just above the comment button, the div element allows you to actually write in it. All right, so now it's time to add some interaction logic in script.js. Let's go ahead and do that. Now in this section onward, you're gonna be adding code to the script.js file, so go ahead and open that file now. First, add some constants to grab key references to the document HTML elements, and also set the CSS class name to use when processing a comment that will essentially will gray out the interface until the comment is approved. Now add a function named handle comment post that will deal with processing a new comment to check if it's spam and write it to the page if it's not considered a spam post. First, it's gonna check if you're already in the process of classifying a comment to avoid multiple requests to classify the same thing. If you're not already in the processing state, then it will set the class of post comment button and the comment text to be the processing class, so they'll appear to be grayed out. Now grab a reference to the current comment text data and log it to the console to check this function is working as expected. You'll add more code to this function later, so take note of the to-do comment at the end of this function, which is where you'll continue coding in the next section. Finally, now the function is defined, you can add a click event listener to the post comment button such that it calls the handle comment post function when it's clicked. Great. Now, if you copied it all over correctly, your live preview should now look like this. When you enter a text comment and click on the comment button, it will gray out and print the text to the console as shown on the right. Brilliant. You now have the basic scaffolding of this website up and running. And the next step is to use the pre-made natural language machine learning model for spam detection. See you in the next section to do that.